Welcome again, guys. Our video today is about general recommendations for personal safety on board ships. Personal safety on board ships is a top priority condition which may ensure that all ship operations will be carried out in an efficient and safe manner by minimizing the number of dangerous situations while on board. Although it is important to provide the appropriate safety equipment as well as a safe working environment to seafarers, it is also key important to help seafarers develop their self-awareness and the correct attitude towards personal safety in order to avoid accidents. Personal safety on board ships always begins with keeping good physical and mental conditions, so staying healthy is at least as important on board ship as elsewhere. Thus, illnesses may reduce seafarers' abilities to concentrate on their job, increasing the risk of accidents. So, staying healthy depends on a balance of work, rest, recreation, regular nutritious meals, adequate sleep, and a moderate use of alcohol and tobacco as well. Hence, misusing of alcohol or drugs not only affects seafarers' health, but also increases their liability to accidents. That's why it is not recommendable drinking alcohol while undergoing treatment with drugs. Even common remedies such as aspirin or seasickness tablets may be dangerous when taken with alcohol. Personal cleanliness is also essential, particularly in tasks where prolonged exposure to mineral oils can cause problems such as dermatitis, since synthetic detergents, solvents, and degreasers such as turpentine can take the natural oils out of the skin, leaving it vulnerable to damage by other substances. Therefore, seafarers must use protective skin creams and take showers frequently to get rid of those mineral substances. Some other chemicals, such as rust removers, have the same effect but can be corrosive. So, when using chemical substances, seafarers must avoid getting splashes on their faces and arms. Consequently, in order to prevent infections, all cuts and abrasions must be cleaned and treated without delay, as well as being protected until they are totally healed. When seafarers become part of the crew of a ship, they must learn about all the safety procedures and safe working practices. First of all, they must familiarize with the ship layouts and the location of the firefighting and life-saving appliances, alarm, escape routes, lifeboats, and everything else that could be helpful in case of an emergency situation. Secondly, seafarers must know what to do in an emergency situation, so having accurate information about their duties according to the master list may guarantee not only their personal safety but the safety of the ship, the cargo and the environment as well. Last but not least, seafarers must also study and comprehend the safety management system manuals since they contain all the procedures to be carried out in order to ensure a safety environment for ship operations. In general, the more complete the protection, the better. Working clothes on board ships must be comfortable but sufficiently close fitting so as not to catch on projections or machinery parts when seafarers are working in cramped positions or they are moving around the ship. Thus, they have to avoid gaping pockets, trailing straps, sweat rags, watch straps or rings 
because they are easily caught in moving machinery. Moreover, casual shoes such as sandals, moccasins, and flip-flops are dangerous on board ship because they offer little protection and add to the risk of tripping or slipping on ladders. Therefore, seafarer must wear proper safety footwear with slip-resistant soles and reinforced toe caps while they are in designated working areas. Besides, they must wear suitable gloves to protect their hands against the dangers of working with cables and ropes, sharp or rough objects, assets, and chemical products. However, seafarers should take care not to wear wet or oily gloves since they may be slippery and dangerous, especially when climbing ladders. The Code of Safe Working Practices lists different types of work where protective clothing or equipment may be needed. For instance, for head protection, there is either the bomb cap that is an ordinary cap with hard penetration resistant shell or a proper safety helmet. The bomb cap protects against knocks and bruises when you are working in confined or enclosed spaces such as the main engine crankcase or a double button tank. Nevertheless, in areas with more serious risk, seafarers should wear a proper safety helmet. Furthermore, seafarers should wear goggles or combined face and eye protectors to protect their eyes when they are welding, grinding, scaling, or when there is a risk of splashes from chemicals. In addition, when working in noisy environments such as the engine room, seafarers must wear proper hearing protectors such as ear muff or ear defenders, which are generally more effective than ear plops. Seafarers must also wear dust masks, respirators, or breathing apparatuses when working in dusty or toxic atmosphere or with paint sprays. Fire is one of the worst hazards seafarers may face at sea, so it is key important not to stimulate conditions for fire by accumulating rubbish in the cabin's corners. Seafarers must keep their cabins clean and tidy since piles of oily rags and waste may catch fire spontaneously if they are left for a long time. Seafarers must not keep flammable materials such as paint or solvents in their cabins. Moreover, discarded matches or cigarettes may start a fire so they must always use an ashtray and ensure to put out lighted matches and cigarettes before leaving them. Most accidents on board ship are caused by slips, trips or falls, so seafarers must watch for slippery patches, obstructions on deck and unguarded openings. They must be on guard against any sudden movement of the ship. On stairs and in companion waves, they must keep one hand free to grasp the handrail. When climbing vertical ladders, they must carry their tools on a tool belt, leaving their hands free to climb. Wearing proper safety shoes will help them protect against slipping or tripping. Seafarers must take into consideration that prevention is better than cure, so they must keep the deck areas clear and unclustered. Consequently, they must properly secure or stove away all loose equipment as well as cleaning it, spillage and spread sand or sawdust over slippery areas. In addition, opening through which a person may fall, such as an open hatchway or in the engine room where floor plates have been removed, 
they should be effectively fenced or guarded. Finally, mariners must keep clear of operations if they are not involved, especially during mooring and cargo handling or when work is being done aloft. Statistics show that seafarers are more likely to get drowned in port than at sea, and this probability becomes greater when they return from a night ashore. Accidents may happen at any time. However, if gangways or accommodation ladders are not properly rigged, secure and fenced with adjustment made to take into account the tidal movement or changes of trim and freeboard, so whatever practicable, a safety net must be read. If the means of access goes over the rail, the boat work step must be firmly fixed with their fencing continuous from the gangway so that there isn't any gap through which seafarers can fall. That's all false, but remember, the right safety attitude is a valuable asset that guarantees your own personal safety. See you next video and do not forget to subscribe to my channel.